if you've been here a while, you've heard this story before. I grew up in Miami, and in Miami, uh, there was a speaker uh, who spoke at Christian conferences. His name was Ted Place. Ted Place was a short little guy. I mean, he was a short little guy. He came up to about my belly button, and uh, I mean, we got to know each other over the years, but talking to him, I, I mean, you always felt like you were looking down at him because he was a short little guy. Uh, but he was a powerful speaker, powerful. And when he became a Christian, uh, he just thought to himself, I'm a short little guy, what can I do for Jesus? You know, when you think about it, you know, I'm, I'm short, I'm whatever, what can I do for Jesus? And then he realized, and you're going to chuckle, but he realized the one thing that he could do really well was he could do somersaults. He could do somersaults. So he's a short little guy, so he could kind of get himself up in a little ball, and he would do these somersaults. And people would be like, wow, that's kind of a cool somersault. And uh, so what he would do is he would go to like elementary school, playgrounds, and he would do somersaults. And people would ask him uh, how he could do somersaults like that, and he used that as his forum to talk about Jesus. Well, again, by the time I met him, he was grown, and he was still talking about Jesus. Yeah, that was his passion in life, because God had called him and God used what he could do in order to proclaim his word uh, through his gifts. Well, you think about the fact that if you are God's child, and I'm going to make a presumption that you belong to the Lord. Therefore, God chose you and God made you. He formed you in order to use you for his glory. And after the service, we're all going to go out and do somersaults. No, we're not. Uh, but, but, but God chose us for a purpose. And, and that's what we want to talk about today as we begin a new series. And it's going to take us to the prophet Jeremiah. So if you have your Bible, I want to invite you to turn to the prophet Jeremiah. Just a little bit past the book of Psalms. Now, if you're using a church Bible, uh, you're going to find it as page 535 in the church Bible. Jeremiah chapter 1. And the series we're going to begin going through is this. Uh, it's godly character, it's lessons from Jeremiah. Godly character, lessons from Jeremiah. How many of you know that we're in the middle of a pandemic? Yeah, are you familiar with that? So every day we wake up and, and life is what it is. Um, are you aware that in just a few days there's going to be an election? Are you aware of that? Have you heard of that? Are you aware of that? Circumstances. Uh, financially, if you look at the, the paper today, it talks about businesses that have been affected, people that have been affected, and the circumstances around us uh, that can just kind of take us off our moorings from following the Lord. Well, Jeremiah, uh, he had a, the nickname of the weeping prophet because what he saw and what he endured was phenomenal. But in the midst of it all, he kept his focus on the Lord. He stayed strong in the Lord. Uh, we're not going to go through all of it, but I would just encourage you over the next couple of weeks, if you spend time in the scriptures, to read the book of Jeremiah. Uh, you'll find a guy who was imprisoned, uh, who was put in a cistern in just mud. I mean, here's the prophet of God. And, and look at what God did with him. He wrote a book called Lamentations, which is all about lamenting uh, what God was doing, not only with Jerusalem, but also with him. But in the midst of it all, he stayed true to the Lord. And it all began with his calling in chapter 1. Now, if you have your outline, I'd invite you to, to pull that out. And hopefully you notice it today. The outline is now more than an outline. It's, it's an actual bulletin, and we'll start doing that as well. Uh, but I want you to pull out the outline that you'll find. And I'm going to give you true confessions uh, from a minister. It doesn't happen often. But I had written the outline, done the outline. You'll see their points in the outline. And uh, you can kind of, if you come here, you know I go about half an hour. And that's the way this goes. And so uh, I have five points in the outline that are main points. Well, we're not going to get to them. I'm just telling you, we're going to get to point number one. And, and that's the way it's going to go. In fact, when I began writing this, uh, I made the comment that we could spend our entire time on point number one. That's what I wrote. And then that's what I did. So we're going to spend our whole time on point number one. Uh, we're going to glance at point number two. I hope you won't mind. And then next week, we'll get into the rest of Jeremiah. But here's what I want to focus on. Uh, in Jeremiah chapter one, he talks about his call from God. And there are two things I, I want you to note. Uh, in the context, it's a specific call to this prophet, Jeremiah. But as we'll look, uh, we'll see that God's call is to each one of us. Secondly, uh, as we go through this, uh, in Jeremiah 1, verses 4 through 10, I want you to note how many times the pronoun I is there, as in God choosing him. So Jeremiah chapter 1, beginning with verse 4. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Alas, Lord God, behold, I don't know how to speak. Because I'm a youth. 
But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am a youth, because everywhere I send you, you shall go. And all that I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord stretched out his hand, he touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up, to break down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build, and to plant. Uh, you think about God's calling of Jeremiah, and you find in the outline this very first thing, that he was chosen by God. He was chosen by God. In verse 5, uh, if you have your Bibles, if you circle or underline, it's the word formed. Uh, the word formed. He said, Be before you were born, I, I formed you. And the imagery used there is of a, a potter who's making some kind of a vessel. And he has this mind taking the, the clay, and he's going to make a, a pot or a tea set or whatever, but he's, he's going to create something. He's going to form something. In fact, in chapter 18 of Jeremiah, uh, he speaks this whole idea of the potter and the clay. If you've ever created anything, in fact, let me just say, how many of you are artists? Any artists in here? Any artists? Writers? Uh, any people with artistic abilities or whatever? And you know how it is. When you create something... You are forming it. Uh, you're, you're making something out of nothing. Uh, every week when I do a sermon, you're taking you know, scripture, but you're creating something. And that's what God says to Jeremiah, and by implication to you and me as well. I formed you. I made you. Uh, I put you the way that you are. God made him. He made him the way he wanted. God made you, and he made you exactly the way that he wanted. Think about that. I shared a story before, Michelangelo, the, the great sculptor, he was looking at a piece of marble that was just kind of sitting there, and somebody came up to him and said, you know, what do you see when you're looking at that piece of marble? And Michelangelo said, I see an angel, and that's what he made. You know, he, he could see that, and, and when I think about God forming you, and as I'm looking at you, now each one of you, you know, God formed you, he made you, he created you, and, and he did it just the way he wanted. Are there things about us that we don't like? Yeah, probably. You know, I wish I had whatever, or I wish I was this, or, but, but God made you. And that's where we have to start, because that's where Jeremiah starts in this particular case. Paul in Romans 12 says that every Christian has been formed by God with spiritual gifts to be used by God for his kingdom. Think about that. Romans 12, you have a gift from God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, Paul amplifies this thought by saying, you have been placed in the body by God. So if you're God's child, uh, he puts you there. He gifted you, he formed you, he made you, and now he's placed you where he wants to use you. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? Because that's what God starts with in terms of the call that is here. I've shared before again the story. A little girl had a, had a man knocking the door, and she's, the man came to the door, and, and this little girl's looking at the man, and she's kind of looking at him very weirdly, very weirdly. And she's kind of, you, know, you know how kids can be, kind of. And the man finally said to her, why, why are you looking at me so strange? And he said, well, my mom said that you were a self-made man. And I'm wondering, why did you make yourself that way? You know, well, you think about that. You know, if we made ourselves, wouldn't we do something different? You know, maybe a little taller, maybe a little shorter, maybe a little whatever. But here's the point. God formed you. And that's where you have to start when you come to the call of God. Well, then you have three words. And are used to remind Jeremiah of God's call on him, which again, by implication, extend to you and me as well. And look again at verse 5. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I knew you. And it carries that thought of knowledge ahead of time, but, but it also God's intimacy with each part. You know, I, I knew everything about you because I, I took all the parts and I created them. I made you. I know how each one of them fits together. And then uh, he goes beyond that, again in verse 5, uh, before I formed you in a womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you, and I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. I consecrated you and I appointed you. A scripture tells us uh, that every single one of God's children, if you're God's child, you have been consecrated. Uh, you are to be holy as the Holy One who called you. You've been set apart by God. Uh, you've been placed into the body exactly the way you wanted. And, and the point is that you have something that the body needs. Think about that. You have something that the body of Christ needs. Now again, we, we tend to think of ourselves as what? Just one little whoever. But in God's economy, he chose you. And he gifted you. And he said, you've got something uh, that this body, whether it's Faith Bible Church or the, or the body at large, that it needs. Now, I say this often, uh, that you're vital to the body of Christ. You are, but you're not indispensable. 
So if you won't do what God wants, he'll find somebody else. But you've got to start there with the call of God, that you have something that the body of Christ needs, or else God would not have chosen you. According to Scripture, here's what we find. We're not going to look at the verses, but let me just give them to you. Romans 8.29. Romans 8.29, God predestined you, and don't get lost in that. God predestined you, and here's why. So that you would become conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. So God called you. How many of you know that if you're a Christian, you're going to be in heaven one day? Do you believe that? You know that? I mean, if you're a Christian, you're going to be in heaven one day. But until then, he called you, he predestined you, he chose you so that you would become conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Now, what does that mean? It means taking on his character in our life more and more. Now, 1 Thessalonians 1.4, you have the verse there. And Paul just says to the Thessalonian church, knowing, brethren, beloved by God, his choice of you. God chose you. God wanted you. And Jeremiah has to know that for where he's going to go. You and I need to know that because it's easy for us at times not to feel overwhelmed with everything going on around us. It's a reminder of God's calling on our life. And then the third verse I want us to note, and I want you to turn there. Keep your finger in Jeremiah. Turn, if you would, to John 15, 16. John 15, 16. It's page 86 in the uh, second part of the church Bibles. It's the fourth book in the New Testament. And in this particular chapter, John 15, and again, if you just want to do a, a real quick study, uh, go through that chapter and look at the word fruit. Because fruit is the idea of what, what shows up in our life as a result of Jesus living in our life. Well, as Christians, uh, we are the fruit of the Spirit. We, we have things that should show up in our life as a result of following the Lord. And then you get to John 15, 16. And Jesus says to the disciples, and again, by application to you and me, John 15, 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I chose you. And then notice the next word, and appointed you. Have you heard that word before today? And appointed you. I, I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you. And, and so here's the point. God chose you not just to get you to heaven. You're going to get there one day. But until then... Uh, how are you serving the Lord and growing in character and ministering in his name? Well, here's where my thoughts got hijacked by the Holy Spirit. So for the next couple of pages of my notes, I'm just going to kind of rant a little bit. So I hope you'll allow me to. You have no choice unless you want to leave. But, uh, but, but here's the point. God, God did not choose us just to sit in a pew for a little bit on a Sunday morning or, or to give a few dollars or, or to give a little bit of time. Uh, God chose us because he wanted us uh, for his purpose and for his glory and for his honor. And what that means in our lives then means taking inventory. Where are you? Where are you in your life in terms of God working in your life? So I began thinking about categories. Uh, you may feel that you're too old to do anything for God. And, and i got to tell you, as I get older, there are things I can no longer do. You know, just the thought of doing a lock-in with a group of teenagers just gives me chills. I mean, just kind of, you know, but years ago, you used to do it, man. That was, that was a thing you did. But, but over time, it changes but you may think you're too old to do anything for God. But let me challenge you. If you have your mind relatively intact, would you consider becoming a prayer warrior for the Lord? I've talked about my mother. Uh, my mother just, she had cards. She had all these cards with names in every single day until dementia took her mind away. She would sit and she would pray. And here's what I would encourage you to do, whether you're old or young, is you take the church directory and, and you pray through the church directory. You may not even know the people. Uh, but it's something I do every month. I, I go through the director. I pray for you. But if you're older, would you make that a habit? I want to be a prayer warrior for God. Or uh, I want to challenge you. Take the same directory and send notes to people. You know, just a, an encouraging note. I say often, I've never received, a, 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 I've never been discouraged by an encouraging note. Have you? Somebody sends you a note and says, hey, thank you for all you do. Man, why did they send that? I mean, it's like, wow, thank you. And if it comes from somebody you don't even know, it's like, wow, that's kind of cool. But if you're older and God lays in your heart, you take the church director and you say, boy, I could do this. You know, I, I could write notes to people and encourage them. Or uh, there may be places where you felt God nudging you to serve. Don't let your age be a deterrent for God using you to fulfill the call that he might have in your life. As you seek the Lord, uh, find what he wants in your life. Well, the other side of it is, <clears throat> is that you may feel that you're too young. After all, I'm only, and I put that there, I'm only a kid. I'm only a teenager. What can I do for God? 
Uh, and I began to, to think about Scripture. Uh, let me remind you of some people who made a difference when they were young. Joseph, at 17, <clears throat> had dreams that showed that God planned to use him. 17 years old. 13 years later, Joseph became the second most powerful man in the world. Think about that. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll, I'll clear my throat and you'll feel better. Um, Pharaoh was first, and he was second. But at 17, because of his character in his life, God chose him. Uh, you may have heard of a captive in Babylonia by the name of Daniel. Uh, the thought is that he was anywhere from 10 to 15 years old. And if you read Daniel 1, he stood up. Not, when I say stood up, I don't mean he rebelled, but he just, he just challenged uh, the, the eating requirements in Babylon. He said, look, I'm a Jew. We have different standards. Uh, can I test the Lord? And, and you see, from 10 to 15 years old, he challenged and he ended up one day becoming one of the most powerful men in the world. Ever heard of a boy named David? Where did David? Uh, became greatest king of Israel. And, and the thought is that as a teenager, he was anointed to be king. And he wasn't anointed to be king so that he would become somebody of character. He was anointed to be king because he had character. Because God knew, I can use him. And, and so what we tend to do is we tend to take our age and, and we'll throw it out as an excuse for why I can't serve God. Paul told Timothy, he said, don't let anyone look down on your youth. Don't let anyone look down on your youth. Now, now full disclosure, the word youth there uh, extended to somebody up to the age of 40. But even from a young age, you know, Timothy was taught the scriptures. He knew the word of God, and he lived them out in his life. Do not let your youth be an excuse for why you will not or think you cannot be used by God. Don't do it. God called you if you're his child, and he has a plan for your life. He wants to develop his character in you now, with the desire that you will mature and develop more and more in him. Now, again, let's be honest. Will you know every answer to every question that comes? No. Are you going to serve the Lord completely right now in every way? No. But the idea is that as God's character continues to be formed in us, no matter what your age, God wants to use you for his purpose. Well, there's a third group, and you know who you are. It's us who feel like at times we're just, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I don't have the time or energy to, to really produce fruit in a way maybe I would like to someday. And I've heard often people say, well, you know, when I retire, then I'll spend time reading my Bible. When I retire, then I, and I'm like, well, how do you know you're going to retire? How do you know God's got, going to take you before then? And so here's the challenge uh, for us. Uh, to look at what you do, how you spend your time and your resources, and to consider this question. And this is a legitimate question, not meant as guilt, but it's a legitimate question. It's when you stand before God one day and he asks you, what did you do with what I gave you? What are you going to say to him? What are you going to say? Well, I had to watch one more episode of Jeopardy. You know, I had to you know, watch the Bears lose. <laughs> Sorry or win, or whatever, or I had to watch the Cubs and the White. And again, in, in, in saying this, uh, I'm not at all suggesting that you quit your job and go into full-time Christian service. That's not the point. I'm, I'm not saying that you neglect your family in order to serve the Lord. But here's the challenge. Will you take time with the Lord to consider your call from God? How has God gifted you? How has he called you? What does he want to do with you? And then don't, don't give the excuses. I'm, I'm too busy or I'm too whatever. You know, we look at our lives and we, and we ask the Lord, Lord, how can I make my life different in order to do that which you would want me to do? A couple of questions that just came to my mind. And here's the first one. Do you desire to become like Jesus? That's the point. Romans 8.29. Do you want to be like Jesus? Is that something that, that, that's within you? Uh, are you filling your mind with what pleases him and then living that out in your life? Are you taking advantage of opportunities to serve him or minister in his name? And will you spend time, and if necessary, get counsel? Say, look, I'd like to, to do this. What do you think? Or I'd like to, to cut this out and, and, and do this. What do you think? But for each one of us, you have been called by God. Do you believe that? You've been called by God. And God wants to use us as a church and us individually for his purpose. Godly character has to start with knowing our calling from God. Well, back to the outline, back to Jeremiah. That's number one. You've got to know that you've been called by God. But here's what happens, and we're just going to glance at, at point number two. Next week we'll, we'll go into it more. But point number two is this, objections from us. In verse six of Jeremiah one, he says this, then I said, alas, Lord God, and the word alas means literally alas. You know, it's just kind of like, you know, just uh, alas. I mean, Lord God, I, I don't know how to speak. 
I don't know what to say because I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid. Now, now again, how many times have you said to God, I, I don't know, I can't, I, and yet God is the one who calls you. He's the one who called Jeremiah. And, and this is what we just notice it relates to us. We can throw up all manner of objections or excuses to God as to why he can't use us. But guess what? Don't you think the one who formed you and made you knows best how to use you? Don't you believe that? He does. And, and that's what he wants to do then with us. Next week we're going to look more at the biblical characters listed in the outline. Uh, but think about Moses. Have you heard about Moses? Heard about Moses? And, and we did a study on Moses. Moses was a, a general in the Egyptian army. He, he defeated a million Ethiopians in battle. He, he was a man who could have been Pharaoh. And, and yet in, at 80 years old, when God called him in Exodus 3 and 4, he offered five excuses for why God shouldn't use him. You know, here he is, God calling him, and he's like, well, you know, here am I, send Aaron. You know, send somebody else. Do something with someone else. Uh, Gideon, and we'll look at him next week. Uh, didn't God know who his tribe was? I, I'm just in the smallest tribe. Don't you know who my tribe is? And God said, absolutely. And so he took him and with 300 men defeated a huge army. Peter, it says in Luke chapter uh, 5, he says, you know, the Lord came to him. And, and the Lord did a great miracle. And Peter looks at the Lord and said, Lord, I'm a sinful man. I'm, he, he understood who he was. But God understood what he could be. And so God chose him and picked him and used him as uh, the, not the cornerstone, but, but as a key foundation in terms of the church of Jesus Christ. For each one of us, God's work was done through the person he had chosen. As God chose you, he wants to use you. I don't know how. Do you? I mean, some of us are already serving the Lord. But, but as we consider, you know, my calling from God, what does God want to do with me? And will I do it without making any excuses? I've shared before uh, this story, and it, it really puts a bad light on me, um, but it, it turns out good. I had a nephew, still have a nephew, uh, and he and I were very close, and, but, but when he was a teenager, and I was in Bible college, and, and I was kind of mentoring him and, and helping him, and he was at a point in his life where he wanted to grow in the Lord, and I would find that I would make promises to him of, of doing things, but then I'd always find reasons why I couldn't do them. Are you like that? I, I'd have excuses. So it came to a, a head where I had promised the children in my Sunday school class, including my nephew, I said, if you will learn this chapter in the Bible, which I knew none of the kids would do, I will take you to a Miami Dolphins football game. That's what I promised, thinking that's not going to happen. Well, little did I know the motivation of my nephew. Uh, he loved the Miami Dolphins. He learned a chapter in a week. He came and recited the chapter and then became the excuses. You know, well, you know, I'm, I'm in college, I'm alive, and, and to my credit, I listened to my oldest brother, who came to me and said, you know, you make promises to my son, and you don't fulfill them. And boy, talk about stab to the heart. Just, whoa. So he and I went, <laughs> I still remember the game, uh, the New York Jets, and it was pouring down rain. And, and I think God just laughed. He laughed. He said, see, if you would have done what you had said two games ago, it wouldn't have been like this. But see, you waited, you delayed, you made excuses, and look at what happened. But from that time on, uh, I, with my nephew, I don't think I've ever made an excuse again, but we have just this common statement that the excuses are there. People all the time will say, well, I'm going to do something, or I'm going to be something, and then they don't do it. And the excuses are there. Well, for God's children, understand, God formed you, God made you, God gifted you, he called you, he set you apart, and now he's appointed you in some way to reach the people around you. And the question is, will you throw up excuses for why not me? Or will you say, Lord, here I am. Will you use me? I just want to, last couple thoughts in the outline, and then we'll be done. Remember, if you're a child of God, he chose you. He chose you. He died to get you, right? He died to get you. And, and then he chose you. You were first pick. Two, since he chose you, he has a plan for you. And his plan is not just to get you to heaven. If you're a child of God, it's guaranteed, but his plan is to use you right now on earth, to, to develop godly character in your life, uh, to, to minister to the people around you, no matter what your age, no matter what your circumstances. Uh, and at least to a final thought to remember. His plan includes taking away you are made and using you for his glory. You think about it, in our society, we tend to hold up people who have what? Uh, education, money, power, prestige. But God's economy normally is just the opposite, right? He takes things that, that aren't very great on the surface, 
In fact, he takes foolish things, he takes things that aren't mighty, and he turns them into his glory in order that he can be exalted. And so when God chose you, he knew exactly what he was getting. And in choosing you and choosing me, his desire then is that we would remember our call from the Lord. So don't let your perceived limitations of you be the deterrent for God's using you. We throw that up, right? Satan whispers all the time about our limitations. But don't let that be your limitation. Don't let that be your excuse. Say to the Lord, here I am. How do you want to use me? What do you want to do with my life? Um, you've been gifted with resources from God. And so the, the question is, will you rest on your excuses for why not me, why not now? Or you say, Lord, here I am. What do you want to do with me? How do you want to use me? How can I serve you in the way that you desire for me? I want you to turn to one more passage of Scripture. And I debated doing this, but I just thought, I, I, I share this verse so often in funerals, but it's 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Um, over the last several months, we've had four people in our church family die. And uh, Pastor Jade Norway does the funerals, and we haven't had a lot of funerals, but when we do them, uh, we talk often about these verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The whole chapter is devoted to resurrection, it's devoted to the fact that if Jesus didn't rise, then you know, our, our faith is in vain. But if Jesus did rise, or since Jesus rose, then, then we have life, we have hope, we have a faith. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, you start with verse 53. Verse 53. Where it says, This perishable must put on the imperishable. And that's the great hope, right? Is that when we do a funeral, we understand that the funeral's not for that person because they're more alive than ever. They're, they're in heaven, they're, they're alive. The perishable puts on the imperishable. Uh, this mortal, verse 53, this mortal puts on immortality. And when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, this mortal will put on imp immortality, then will have come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And, and Paul asks, so death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then it's verse 58. If you underline your Bible, uh, the word therefore there, it, to me, is, is, is the key verse for you and me in understanding our call from God. Is therefore. One day we're going to be with the Lord, right? Perishable puts on the imperishable. Mortal puts on the immortality. But therefore, knowing that, he says, my beloved brother, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Until God calls you home, until God calls me home, he's left us on earth, uh, that we would take the call of God in our life, that we develop his character within us, we become more conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And then we'd offer no excuses as to why God can't use us. Jeremiah was young. Uh, the, the thought, again, is that he could be anywhere from 10 to 12 to 14 years old. Imagine God appearing to you at that age. I think I would have had a heart attack even then. But just that this kid chosen by God. Well, God chose you at whatever age you are, and his design is to use you. Don't throw up excuses to God. Say, Lord, here I am. Will you use me in whatever way you want? And will you guide me in that way? Let's pray together. Father, think about your call in our life. And it is easy to minimize the thought of what you could do through us. And yet again, as I went through that, that litany in my own mind of teenagers and those who are young, of, of Joseph, who became a great ruler in Egypt, of Daniel in Babylonia. I think of Esther, who as a young woman uh, became powerful in Persia. Father, I think of Timothy, who at a young age uh, demonstrated character for you and was chosen by Paul uh, to become an incredible pastor and minister uh, to so many. Uh, Father, I think of Moses at 80, uh, who was chosen by you. Uh, to lead the Israelites out. Father, we think about Noah, who at an old age, uh, at least compared to us, built an ark. Father, we think about so many in so many places who you called, you chose, you put your hand on them. And Father, it's so easy for us to offer excuses for why not us and why not now. But Father, I pray that each one of us would take to heart what Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 13, that we would, we would examine ourselves. They would ask, where are we in the faith? Where are we in our walk with the Lord? What are we doing in order to honor and please him? And, and Father, it's not 
to earn your favor because we have your favor. And so I pray that we would start with the understanding that if we are going to develop godly character, we must recognize the call of God in our life. You've called us, you chose us, you desire to use us. And so with that in mind, I pray that this day and this week, that we would go out asking, Lord, how you best want to use us for your honor and for your glory. As we give thanks for your calling on our life, in Jesus' name, amen. This final thought. Uh, Godly character has to start with knowing that we are called by God. It's got to start. Because Satan will whisper all the time, who are you? Who are you? You know, but if you are God's child, you are called by him. And his desire then is that we would grow in character in order to honor him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you stand as we sing a final song to the Lord?